my fellows.
for every shifting mood, every emotional trauma, for every difficult issue in life, one can find the answer in the book of Psalms. Yes, sir. Come on up. Come on up. The word reads like a diary. David, in his young life, as well as when he got old, is believed that David wrote nearly half of the entire book of Psalms. In our Simmons Bible College class, Pastor Griffin and Second Baptist, we learned about many facets of Psalms. There are what's called imprecatory Psalms, where David asked God to kill his enemies. There are Psalms of praise. There are Psalms of lament. There are Psalms of protection. There are Psalms of wisdom. There are pilgrimage Psalms. There are thanksgiving psalms, and there are royal psalms. But each one of them contains a powerful word when the soul needs to be encouraged. Yes, All right. Walk with me, if you will, Walk. through some of these encouraging psalms. You know the Bible can preach itself. You know that. All right. All right. So when you hear things like, blessed is the man, that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, well, well. or stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn. Yes. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right. And in his law will he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The Bible preaches itself. O Lord, how excellent is thy man that all the earth who has set thy glory above the heaven. Uh, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mayest steal the enemy and the avenger. When thou consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? Thou art mindful of him, thou son of man, that thou visitest him. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. The, the Bible preaches itself. You know this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He Restore my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. Yeah, we yeah. wept yeah. when we remembered 
Zion. Yeah. We hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they uh, uh -huh. that wasted us required of us mirth by saying, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. But how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The song preaches itself. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. So, so be still and know that I am God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But one of the favorite songs of all time is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, when they, when they plan and plot to do me in, when they set traps for me, when they dig ditches for me, when the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, just before they got to me, God tricked them and they failed. And they stumbled all over the place. But, but to the believer, God offers us unparalleled security. We have the security, first of all, of personal guidance. The Lord is my light. Yeah. Yeah. He is my salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yes, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies yes. and my foes, come to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fear. Yes, sir. I, I know he's your life, but that's not personal for me. I need him to be my life. Yeah. You ought to thank God for your mother's God. Yeah. But you need to know him for yourself. Because yeah. when life turns on you, you're going to need a personal relationship. You're going to need a God who can guide you personally. Yeah. Yeah. And since he gives us personal guidance, we shouldn't have to have a praise team leader, yeah. a deacon or preacher, coaxing, coaxing us and pumping and prodding us to give God praise. Right. When I think about what I have in Christ, how he saved me, how he sanctified me and forgave me and washed away my sin with his blood, I could be at my house and give him praise. Sometimes I could be driving my car and I could be sitting in an office and start praising God. I don't need somebody to tell me, put your hand together and give God praise. personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But well, it's easy in this world to lose your way. So you need somebody to guide you. It's easy with all of the distractions that we have to get our focus off what's really important. I don't know about you, but the Lord is my life and my salvation. And because he's my life and my salvation, there's no need for me to fear anything or anyone. It's right here in the text. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. If you kill me, I ain't got but one time to die. No. And then I'm already dead because I was born twice. I just got to die once. You heard it say before. Born twice, die once. Born once, die twice. Uh, and when you're born again, you only die one time. And, and, and for me to live is Christ and to die is death. So my enemies can't do me no harm. I've learned that it makes no sense as a believer to stay up worrying about who's out to get you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you're not going to stop folk from disliking you. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to stop them from spreading rumors about you. So let me give you some good advice. Get in your car. Look in the passenger side mirror and realize that God is on your side. Yeah. Whoever tries to come against you, just look in the mirror on the passenger side. There's a little writing that will assure you that God is coming up in yeah. the rear. Yeah. When you get in your car, just read that writing on the bottom of the passenger side of the mirror. It says, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Yeah. It may not look like God is coming on your side. It may look like the devil is 
getting the upper hand, but objects are closer than they be. You might think God is lagging behind, but your situation is closer than you ever knew. He's my life. He's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, sir. God will give you strength in your senior years so that you're stronger in your 60s and 70s than you were in your 30s and 40s. Amen. Because you got more sense now. Yes, you got more wisdom. You understand things better now. You understand things better than you did then. That's why David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. Now, you might have to ask for some bread, but you ain't had to beg. God will keep you. God will protect you. God will guide you. He'll give you strength, even when your hair turns gray. When your eyes are full of tears and your soul is weary, God come right alongside to give you strength. Yeah. He is the strength of my life. Yeah. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. All right, God. All the right. wicked. You gotta all be, be awfully young not to know that there's some wicked people that go to church. Yeah. 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 Wicked. There's some low down folk yeah. that come to church every week. Yeah. I mean, will look you in your face and smile at you and stab you in the back while they hug you. Hello. <laughs> You know the song we, we said a few times. What they do, they smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. What are they called by? The backstabbers. Y'all know that song. Y'all gonna have house party with that song. What they do, y'all you know, you be doing nothing the there. But you ain't got to stay up at night worrying about how folk are gonna trap you. Well, the psalmist said, he that keepeth thee will not slumber, yes. and he that keepeth Israel will not slumber nor sleep. Yes. So if he's up all night long, ain't no sense in both of us being up all night. <laughs> no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. It's personal guidance. Yes. But then the psalmist moves from personal guidance to powerful guardianship. He says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I'll seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, yeah. to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Mm -hmm. And here it is, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Yes, what David had in mind with this word pavilion was that the host of Israel, the armies of the Lord, were encamped and where were they camped to fight the enemy? The soldiers were all around in their tents, alert and waiting for a word from the king. And in the middle of all those tents was a pavilion where the king slept. So if the enemy came, he had to get through their army to get through the pavilion. So when trouble rises, I belong to the Lord and he hides me in his pavilion. So by the time they get to me, God's already killed me. The phrase, hide me in his pavilion, literally means he puts me away like a treasure so that nobody who tries to get me can get their hands on me. All right. He's a guardian, he's a keeper, he's a protector, provider, he's hidden me in his pavilion. In that pavilion, we have provisions. While those outside of the pavilion lives on rations, I'm eating with the king. All right. You don't know how precious you are in the sight of the living God. Amen. When he hides you in his pavilion, he'll give you provisions that yes. other folk don't know nothing about. And, and they won't know, they try to figure out why are you so strong? Why are you so happy? Why are you so excited? It's because you're in the pavilion where God is providing. We gotta stop crying about what we don't have and start praising God about what we do have. We got somebody looking out for you. He's holding you in the palm of his hands, and nobody's able to pluck you out of his hand. 
It was a time where the church used to shout on Sunday with nickels and dimes. Didn't have any money. And, 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 and Edda, the old school church, used to call it dudes. Didn't have no defenses. Every courtroom, every police authority, and every act of legislation to our foreparents said to them, you don't matter. They were nobody everywhere else. They were a boy and gal Monday through Friday, yeah. Saturday. But on Sunday morning, when they got to the Lord's house, yeah. many of them had newspapers for their wallpaper. Yeah. And, and personally, and Lisa and Terry can tell you, we had gray paneling buckling off the wall with highlights of dust and grease everywhere. But when we went to church, we sang every time I feel the spirit. Yeah. Moving in my heart. Oh, great. When we went to church, the Savar used to sing, over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. When we went to church, we sang, I'm on my way to New Jerusalem, where the sun will never go down. Every day I'm making preparations, packing up, getting ready to go. I'm packing up. Get ready to go. Yeah. Some of you have been here since Sunday school. God's blessed you with a good job. He blessed you to retire. He blessed you with a nice house. He blessed you with a nice car. You got money in your 401k. The Lord has protected you and kept you down through the years, and you ain't opened your mouth yet. <laughs> you ain't told God thank you yet. You, you attributed it to your hard work and independence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if you don't want to praise him, well, if you're not grateful for what he's doing for you, if you're not excited what he's up to in your life, let me go ahead for you and say for you, I'll bless the Lord at all times. Yes. His praise shall continually be in my mind. I'm grateful that he hides me in his way. There's one last thing here in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me on a rock. So it's personal guidance. It's powerful guardianship, but finally profound glory. He'll hide me by putting me on a rock. He shall hide me by raising me up on a rock. And he'll hide me in plain sight. He'll put me up where my enemies can see me, but they can't get to me. They can throw darts at me, but they won't reach me. They know where I am, but they can't put their hands on me. They're watching me shout, and they can't make me shut up. They're watching me bless God, and the more I shout, the matter they get. But they can't do nothing about it because he hides me on a rock in the secret place. Now, the tabernacle in the Old Testament was a secret place, and how the ark of the testimony was hidden behind a curtain. The veil separated the holy of holies from the most holy. Nobody could go back there but the high priest. Then the high priest could only go back there once a year. Well, Before he went back there, he took his clothes off and washed himself and then put on his ceremonial ephod. And then he asked them to bring him two goats. One goat, he put the sins of the people on them and turned him loose in the wilderness and he became for them a scapegoat. Yeah. Then he slaughtered the other goat and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat. That's right, that's right. Now the mercy seat covered the Ark of the Covenant and inside of the Ark of the Covenant was a cup of manna that didn't spoil. It also had Aaron's rod that started growing flowers and a tablet of stone that God gave Moses in the Ten Commandments. Uh -huh. And the priest would go back there once a year to absolve the people of their sin. Yes, but one Friday on Catholic Cross, <laughs> on God offers the veil was rent or torn from top to bottom, letting us know that we can have direct access to God. And so now when God hides me and sets me on a rock, he covers me with his blood. No wonder a rock of Lowry Road, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That, that, that's why I praise God the way I do, because my enemy. Can't get their hands on me. That's why I give God praise this morning because he's been too good to me. Yeah. He took care of me last week, yeah. last month, last year, the year before that. Yeah. 
the year before that, the year before that, and showed up the year before that with our almost left here. We've suffered through some of the worst economic downturns in the history of this country. But none of us went home. If you remember Mount Olive, you ain't got no excuse. You can even get it to go plate if you need to. Some people lost their house, but you still got a roof over your head. Somebody may have lost their job, but you haven't lost a pound. God has been taking care of you. You might have lost your car, but you still have transportation. And most of all, you're in Christ and you have salvation. Don't act like you don't know who it is that brought you. Nobody but Jesus. And so the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled in faith. Those who are hostile toward me end up falling on their faces and have to go away living in shame because they've been tripped up trying to get to me. Yeah. God's been protecting you. God has been your personal guide and your guardian. God has hidden you on a rock. You ought to tell him thank you for being good to me. And if you don't want to tell him thank you, I will. If you don't want to praise his name, I will. If you don't want to lift your hands, I will. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. Thank you for hiding me in plain sight. Thank you when, when he hides me on a rock, he puts me in plain sight. He's the only one that can hide you and at the same time you can be seen. Making an exhibition of what he can do when you trust his name. I'm exhibit number one. When the devil tries to put me on trial, the Holy Spirit turns around and offers me as exhibit number one. There's some other exhibits in here today. When I call you exhibit, you all testify. I, I was a drug addict. But, but here God is hiding me on a rock. I was an alcoholic. But God rescued you. Somebody used to be broke, but it took three or four dollars in your pocket. Somebody went to jail, but he signed your bond. Somebody has a hateful heart, but somehow or another you've been engulfed by his love. Somebody gossip as often as they can and think it's justified, but he's changing your conversation. And now your testimony is I never would have made it. If it wasn't for the law on my side. But the reason I made it. Because he covered me with his blood. One Friday, he went to a rugged cross.
Sing. Oh. 